I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think DC actually have a plan. So yesterday was a big day for DC fans, and tomorrow will be an even bigger day for DC fans, with the DC Fandom event finally happening. We got our first look teases at the Batman 2021, the teaser for the trailer for Justice League, and perhaps the biggest news of all, Ben Affleck returning as Batman in 2022. It's crazy to think, just yesterday, last year, we got the news that Spider-Man would be leaving the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which fortunately didn't come to pass. This year, we get the news that Ben Affleck is returning as Batman. That's just... Mm, what an upgrade. 2020 has been a pretty shitty year, especially in comparison to 2019, but that was one piece of good news. That's one part where 2020 upgraded. Now, I've had a lot of concerns about the DC Extended Universe. We began with the Zack Snyder films, Man of Steel and Batman v Superman, which were love it or hate it. I for one loved them, but I understand why they didn't work for a lot of people. Then we kind of had the Suicide Squad Harleyverse branch, where it had more of kind of a street grunge aesthetic to it. And went in more of a feel-good kind of a direction, which is a direct contrast to what Zack Snyder had going. Patty Jenkins' Wonder Woman, which was a lot less divisive, but still more of a branch off of the Zack Snyder films. Justice League kind of threw everything in the bin. And then we had Aquaman and Shazam, which felt more like self-contained movies. We had Birds of Prey, which a sequel to Suicide Squad, but in a very different style and a lot better. We had Joker, a film that takes place outside of the DC Extended Universe continuity. Strictly self-contained, and Warner Brothers had made pretty clear that they were not doing a cinematic universe for DC anymore. And I for one thought, okay, it's good that they're gonna be doing more standalone stories that work on their own two feet, and they're gonna be putting lots of effort into these individual movies, that's a good thing. But it does feel a little bit defeatist to throw every bit of crossover potential out of the window over this. So there's kind of been this aspect of, okay, is all the stuff that I enjoyed now null and void? Is there no longer any point in kind of investing in that side of things now? Because ultimately, it's what's in the movies that counts more so than what executives say behind the scenes. It is what's on screen that counts. But I feel like DC have very much been giving us the answer as to what's going on with their cinematic universe. We had Teen Titans Go versus Teen Titans, which set up a multiverse between the different versions of the Teen Titans. We've had the CW's Crisis on Infinite Earths event, which saw many different versions of the DC characters crossing over for the very first time, including Ezra Miller's Flash making his first appearance in the CW. And then we also had earlier this year Justice League Dark Apocalypse War, which bid farewell to the DC animated universe. I think the answer has been standing right under our noses all this time. DC Comics have always prided themselves on having a multiverse with lots of different creative renditions of their characters. And it seems like that is exactly what the Flash solo movie is now setting up with both Ben Affleck and Michael Keaton reprising their roles as Batman, and this film running parallel to the Robert Pattinson Batman movies. There has always been some questioning, especially from me as well, if having multiple different renditions of a character running at the same time would cause confusion for audiences, but I feel like maybe that's what they're gearing people up for with the different media that DC has been pushing lately. With Teen Titans Go vs Teen Titans, it's kind of demonstrated that little children can follow different versions of these characters. With the Crisis on Infinite Earths event on the CW, that's proven that a general TV audience can follow multiple different versions of the same character. So maybe the Flash solo movie is setting that up for the big screen as well. So DC aren't doing a cinematic universe so much as they are doing a cinematic multiverse. Ultimately, it's not like people were asking about continuity during the Joker movie either, which opens the floodgates for multiple different filmmakers and storytellers to leave their very own stamp on these characters, while having even more crossover potential than there would be with just the one singular version. Now, that doesn't mean they should do the crossover shtick with every different version of every different character. There should still be some restraint in place. I don't really think it would work if we saw Christopher Nolan's Batman crossing over into other universes, because part of the appeal of Christopher Nolan's Batman is the realism, and crossing over through different multiverses is, I just think, off the cards for that universe. I think with Ben Affleck's Batman and 
Tim Burton's Batman, there's definitely more crossover potential for those guys because they are naturally less grounded. Because with Tim Burton, we got this very fairy tale-ish take on the character, and with Zack Snyder's Batman, we've got this very mythical take on the character. I think this whole thing does owe a lot to Crisis on Infinite Earths, whether you liked that particular crossover or not, it did demonstrate that crossing over different DC properties works really well, as people love the different cameos and Brandon Routh returning as Superman. And it makes me wonder, is that the last we'll see of Brandon Routh's Superman, or do you think maybe we'll see him in a DC Extended Universe film? Maybe we will see Grant Gustin's Flash on the big screen alongside Ezra Miller someday, maybe it'll be sooner than we think, maybe it'll be this Flash solo movie that's coming soon. Being as this film is loosely based on the Flashpoint story arc, I think there's a strong chance that things will never be the same for the DC Extended Universe. I think there is a chance that this will be the bow out of the DC Extended Universe as we know it. So there's no guarantee that we'll be seeing Ben Affleck's Batman again after this, or Henry Cavill's Superman if they want to put that to bed. Which would be a huge shame because I love both versions of those characters, but at the same time, they've got Robert Pattinson as the next Batman. Maybe that's going to weave him into the universe of Ezra Miller's Flash. Maybe Ezra Miller's Flash is going to be the thing to tie all of the confusion together and make sense of all of it. I think there's a lot of testing the waters going on here. I think they're probably testing the waters with the Matt Reeves Robert Pattinson Batman trilogy. That's going to be a standalone thing for now, but maybe once the trilogy's wrapped up, they'll see how they can cross that over. And I get the feeling that Flash 2022 is going to be testing the waters with Ben Affleck as well, because obviously his time playing Batman in the DC Extended Universe was a dark period of his life. And Barbara Muschietti, one of the executive producers of Flash 2022, did say that she was very surprised at how open Ben Affleck was to returning to the role. He's in a much better place now, personally speaking, so maybe this is testing the waters for perhaps Ben Affleck could just be our primary Batman for this universe. Maybe Ben Affleck's Batman will be the Batman that crosses over with all the other characters, while Robert Pattinson just keeps to those standalone movies. I think this is a very fun experiment that they're doing here. And I have to say, mad respect to Ben Affleck for stepping up again. I'm hoping they won't work him as hard when it comes to the workout stuff. Like, I'm fine with having a more athletic Batman. I know that the workout was one thing that put a lot of physical strain on him, so like, maybe ease up on that. Because ultimately, I do still care about the people making these films and their well-being. As excited as I am to have Ben Affleck back, I'm just hoping it's not going to be at his own personal expense once again. But there's a lot of different factors in this as well, like the last time he donned the cape and cowl, it was for Justice League 2017, which was a very stressful film to make. Obviously, we had what happened with Zack Snyder changing over to Joss Whedon. A lot of hard work was just thrown out the window, Ben Affleck having to return to last-minute reshoots that he wasn't ready for, and also we've got the allegations that Joss Whedon was abusive on set. Not to mention that these films were not being very well received at the time. So you pile that onto Ben Affleck's own personal struggles with alcoholism as well, and the collapse of his marriage with Jennifer Garner, that's not a good time for him. That's really not, but there's a number of different things that may have caused the change for Ben Affleck to return to the role. One, I hate to say it, but the release the Snyder Cut movement. I never like to fuel a sense of self-importance in fanboys, but I think we really did show a lot of appreciation for Ben Affleck and Zack Snyder. And obviously with the Snyder Cut now being released, something that Ben Affleck did also champion for, he's seen that this can turn around. He's seen that we can get a happy ending out of this. Not to mention he's also in a great place with Ana de Armas, so it's nice to know he's got something stable going on with someone that's looking out for him. So I think these are the contributing factors to him returning as Batman. Do you think maybe someday we'll ever see him cross over with Robert Pattinson? I think it depends on what they're going to do with the Robert Pattinson Batman universe. I don't think they're diving too hard into grounding it in reality. I think it's going to be something very stylized, so if that style can mesh, then maybe they should give it a shot. Either way, I'm wondering if this means we're going to get new approaches taken towards Wonder Woman, Superman, and The Flash as well. I mean, we've got the Superman TV series coming to the CW with Tyler Hecklin as well. So if he's still doing it, and Henry Cavill's still doing it, again, that's two different versions of the same property running parallel. And it's not like this is anything new, because running parallel to the DC Extended Universe, we also had the Gotham TV series, so that was two different Batmen. And I think I know what that means. 
Warner Brothers, lift that stupid fucking bat embargo. Let TV have a Batman. So what do you guys think? Comment below and discuss. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, why don't you hit subscribe, hit the like button. And in the description below are links to different social media handles where you can come and connect with me. If you're feeling extra supportive, extra generous, also in the description below is the link to my Patreon as well as the join button. Your support is greatly appreciated. But with all that being said, thank you so much for watching fellow home dogs and have a great day.